جميع المسلمين في كل البلاد then it becomes obligatory for all the Muslims to observe fasting all over the world but this original position of the Fiki schools which was a kind of consensus in the Jamhur the agreed upon position of the Hanafi, Maliki, Hanbali and also the majority of the Shafi school of thought was later challenged and abandoned by the Hanafi, Maliki and Hanbali and also Shafi stalwarts. The later jurists from the same schools they understood the hadith Sumuli Ru'yati, Waftiruli Ru'yati in a different manner with the different interpretations in accordance with the realities of their culture and of their geography. When the Muslim empire expanded all the way to Andalus, which is present in Spain, or to Khurasan, Central Asia, or Iran, or all the way to India, those people were not living perhaps in the same horizon, in the same matla. It was very difficult for them to know the news from Syria or Iraq or, or Palestine or Saudi Arabia and at the same time the understanding of the empire, the understanding of the geographical realities was a little different uh, in the coming generations or the later generations than the situation in the first one or two generations uh, from Sahaba to Tabi'in or to the early jurist. So therefore the later jurists, they said, no, this hadith of Sumu li ru'yati, waftiru li ru'yati, it does not demand the global sighting, it actually requires the local sighting. Because the Prophet ﷺ did not say, Sumu li ru'yati Makkah, masala, that fast whenever it is sighted in Makkah or Syria or Palestine or Iraq. He referred to the moon itself, Sumu li ru'yati, fast by sighting it and that sighting is local because this is your sighting. So therefore the later jurists, especially the Shafi stalwarts, they required the local moon sighting. And their fatwa was likulli baladin ru'yatuhum, that for each locality is their own local sighting as likulli baladin fajruhum wa zawaluhum wa zuhruhum. As Imam al-Karrafi rahmatullah says, that for each locality, its Fajr, its Zawal time, its Zohor, Maghrib and Isha is connected with the local timings. In the same fashion, Sumu li Ru'yati means that you have to go with your own local sighting as you go with your own Fajr timing and Zohor timing and Maghrib and Isha timing. They also gave certain, uh, you know, uh, proof or, or the, the, the dalil from Qiyas or analogy. For instance, Imam al-Karrafi rahmatullah he says that if there are two brothers, one is living in the east and is one is living in the west, say for instance in Spain, Muslim Spain, and both of them they pass away at the Zawal time on the same day. But the Zawal of the person in the east was earlier than the Zawal of the person living in the West. So therefore, the person who died East, who died in the East, is the one who passed earlier, passed away earlier than the person who is living in, say, Spain and passed away at the Zawal time of Spain. So therefore, the one who passed away in Spain will inherit from the brother who passed away in East, for instance, in Iraq, because the one who passed away in the East died before the one who died in Spain and whosoever dies before does not inherit but the one who dies after the other one inherits from the legacy or inheritance. So in the same, in the same fashion they said that each community has got its own sunrise and its own moonrise. Therefore every community has to go with their own local moon sighting. Now also when we look at the sighting and the requirements of sighting that is very different in different schools of thought. Some of the schools of thought they require that at least there should be al-jam al ghafir a large crowd of people who will witness the moon sighting. 
Some of them require one individual witness. Others require two individuals witness. Some of them require ten. Some of them, as I mentioned, the large crowd, al Jamil Ghafir. So therefore, citing in itself is not a problem. But the interpretation and the implication of citing is not qat'i, is not categorical, but it is ghani. It is something which can be once again interpreted in different fashions and ways. Sighting is also connected with our own eye sighting, the capabilities, the realities in the atmosphere, the angle of the moon from the sun, the altitude, the latitude, the longitude, the position of a person upon earth, and almost so many other uh, atmospheric realities like the dust, like the moisture, as well as the human capability. One of us may have got very strong, powerful eyes and will be able to see the moon, but the others may not have the same capabilities. What I'm trying to say is that the hadith of Sumu li ru'yati, waftiru li ru'yati, is kat'i al-subut, that that hadith is categorically authentic, but it's not categorical in its implication. There are different interpretations given to the meanings of that hadith and that has happened in the same schools of thought and within the same parameters established by those schools of thought. This has been the problem for the Muslim community of North America. For years and years they have been debating this issue and grappling with the hadith of Rasulullah their interpretations and the opinions of various jurists. And remember one thing, that the Muslim community of North America has tried almost every opinion. Some of us, we have gone with the global sighting. That did not bring the unity among the Muslim community of North America. Because if the news comes from Saudi Arabia, some of us would, you know, readily accept that uh, witness. But if the news comes from Nigeria, or Libya or say from any other Muslim country they will not accept their sighting even though the hadith says Sumu li ru'yati, waftiru li ru'yati. that start fasting when the news of its sighting comes and stop fasting when a confirmed news of its sighting reaches you but then we started discriminating no this is not a genuine news or this is not a genuine confirmation but then the people started asking, where did the Prophet ﷺ say that Sumu li ru'yati Makkah? That fast when it is seen in Makkah or in Medina or in Saudi Arabia. In the same fashion, what happens even though that there is a clear-cut saying or there is a clear-cut report in Sahih Muslim about the uh, ikhtilaf al-matale, about the variety of horizons. But so many different interpretations are given to that report that it became very difficult for the community even to accept that one as the, the leading factor in our decision making. The hadith of Quraib which is reported by Imam Muslim in his Sahih is authentic hadith. We are told that Al-Fadl ba'athathu ila shah Umm Al-Fadl sent Sayyidina Quraib radiallahu ta'ala no, to Syria because she needed something from the Khalifa of that time, Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala no. And when he went to Syria, they and people in Syria along with the Khalifa himself, they saw the moon on the night of Friday. So he observed almost the whole month of Ramadan and then by the end of the month of Ramadan, he returned to Medina. And he saw Abdullah ibn Abbas and while talking about different issues, the issue of Ramadan and Eid came. So Quraib he said, Ra'inahu Laylatil Juma. We saw the moon on the night of Friday. And when Nas Ra'u or Wara'ahu Nas and the people saw him, Wara'ahu Muawiya was and Muawiyah himself عنه, saw the moon and fasted. But Ibn Abbas he said, 
walakinna ra'inahu laylatu sabt but we saw the moon here in Medina on the night of Saturday so Quraib radiyallahu ta'ala anu ask him afala taktafi or awala naktafi bi ru'yat muawiyah wouldn't you or shouldn't we you know just take the sighting of the khalifa the leader of the muslims of that time as the clear uh, dalil the proof of the beginning of the month of ramadan abbas ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala says la no hakaza amarana rasulullah sallam this is the way the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam ordered us now in spite of the fact that quraib is talking about basically syria and ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala no is talking about medina and not much of a distance is between the syria syrian borders and the nowadays saudi borders but in spite of them being maybe in the same horizon the sighting of one city or one locality is not taken as applicable or obligatory upon the other locality so some of the scholars who say no we are not going to go with the global sighting but we are going to go with the local sighting do have got some authentic dalil or proof in the reports but then that report is also interpreted by different scholars in different fashions some of them they have said that ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala no he did not accept the 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 witness of quraib because quraib is one witness and we are told that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said if two witnesses come and give you the witness of the month of ramadan then you start the month of ramadan some of them they give a different interpretations some of them even go to the level where they say oh no there was a political difference between muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala no and the people of medina or ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala no somehow i'm not talking about these details right now what i'm trying to say is that in spite of the fact that there is a report which clearly uh, kind of leads towards variety of horizons but within our community and within our scholarly community there is a difference about the implication of that authentic report so now the muslim community started going with the local moon sighting but even then the issue was not resolved some of us will keep on going with the global sighting with the sighting of saudi arabia or egypt some of us will go for the local moon sighting some of us will go with their native countries and the problem was not resolved so then the muslim community started looking for some scientific solution to this problem and they adopted the calculation for negation purposes for nafi that if somebody comes and gives us the report that he or she has sighted the moon whether locally or the report comes globally then they will check with the astronomers and look at the position of the moon the longitude the latitude the altitude the angle and ask them whether or not it was possible uh, for the moon to be sighted with the naked eyes and when we started using uh, calculations as negation again there was there was problem because even among the muslim astronomers or the non muslim astronomers there is no consensus about the angle as well as the other different scientific criterions some of them will follow the dujan uh, criterion 6.5 some of them will say no it has to be 7.5 some of them will say no it has to be 8.5 some of them will talk about even 11 degrees so there was no consensus among the non muslims as well as the muslim astronomers about the true visibility curve when the moon can be seen and when truly uh, you cannot deny its presence in the horizon or its visibility so fika council of north america after trying the global sighting local sighting calculation for nafi or for negation somehow could not find uh, a proper resolution to our problem and to the chaos and disunity within the muslim community then we started reflecting what could be done to resolve this issue in an amicable fashion so that we can bring as much unity as humanly possible 
and that's where we started looking into the possibility of using calculation as affirmation rather than just the negation of the month of Ramadan.